Hi, hello. How are you? I am here. Um, <laughs> what is going on? Hi. <sighs> Welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and I'm having a rough day, but I am going to be doing a vlog for you that I don't, what is going on? So today is February 6th and it is the first day of Jan Agaton's Jante's Inferno readathon. Hi, I'm editing. It's Jante's Inferno. Jante because her name is Jan. I was confused and I never corrected myself. Um, but I heard Jan say it, Jante, which would make sense because that is in fact her name. I recently started watching Jan's channel and I love it. It's so much fun. And I just really enjoy her content. So yeah, she, when she announced this readathon, I was so excited because first of all, I completely forgot about Winterween, so I did not participate. I would love to do a reading, a readathon. And also, the concept of this is really cool. So basically, it's like the nine levels of hell, and there's a prompt for each of them, and you start on the lowest one, and then you have to like make your way up out of hell. This is going to be a pretty short intro, but basically for the first prompt, I wish I could remember what Circle of Hell it is, but it's to read a book with snow on the cover. And this copy does not actually have snow on the cover, but this book, No Exit by Taylor Adams, does have one with snow on the cover. Oh. Do not fear. I will put it right there because proof. I'm so excited to read this. I've wanted to read it for years because I feel like everyone on booktube kind of read this a year or two ago and everyone loves it. It's this thriller where basically this woman, I think, is driving home to like see her mom, but there's a snowstorm and she stops at this rest stop to like get some gas and like wait out the storm. And then she sees a child in the back of someone's car, but I think the kid is in a cage. And she's like, that's really concerning. And there's like several people at this rest stop. So she has to figure out like who's kidnapped this child and what is she gonna do about it? Really, really interesting. And I'm really excited to be reading it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna start off with looking for jobs, then I do have some uni work to do, and then I will read this. Stop that. Um, but who knows how much I'll really read tonight, because I'm also supposed to be going to a jazz bar with my friend, but she hasn't texted me. And if she doesn't end up texting me, I'm gonna go to the pub with some friends, but not buy anything, because I... And broke. So I am just really, really stressed. But it's fine. And I do really need some escapism, but I do actually, like, I have to deal with life things right now. Anyway, I'll update you guys when I have read some of this. Hopefully, I'll be doing better when I see you next. Okay, so it is the next day, and last night I ended up reading, I think, to page seven of No Exit. Um, <laughs> I just, I had a rough day, and I got really stressed, I think, today and yesterday. I've just been so overwhelmed, because I'm like, I'm in my last year of uni, I'm having to write my diss. I just realized I'm super broke, so I've been, like, furiously applying to jobs. I have so much reading for uni, or actually I don't have a lot, but I read one, one essay today 
took me three hours to read. It was so long and I have to like present on it tomorrow and I didn't even bother to come up with my points for the presentation. I do have time, like I don't have my seminar till four tomorrow, but like I thought I was, <sighs> I was so prepared to go and like get things done and that just took ages. It took like all the life out of me. So yeah, it's just been a rough like 32 hours just mood wise and I've been really stressed like last night I did not I didn't go to sleep until like 4 a.m because I had this like low level anxiety that just wouldn't let me sleep so yeah and um, for the past like hour and a half I've been kind of just doing nothing online like well not doing nothing I read a couple articles that's kind of like slay of me I haven't really wanted to read although i did really love the first seven pages of no exit like it kind of instantly pulled me in so i've decided i'm gonna ignore everything else i've got to do because that's like i i need to do so many things that it feels massive and i am so stressed i'm just gonna take the night off i'm gonna read no exit i'm gonna do some sprints because jana had her sprints with katie colson my fave today for the readathon so i'm just gonna watch those on youtube and read my book Ugh. i try not to fall asleep because i am obviously exhausted because i was up till four so i'm gonna do that i literally i just need to i need to chill like i was considering just not doing this vlog earlier today and it is the second day of the vlog just because i didn't read much yesterday and i haven't read it all today and it's 9 30 like it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay and sometimes we're just not at our best and i wish i could be reading everything but there's so much stuff i'm ignoring reading for school and for my dis that it's really hard sometimes to read for fun and I sh it's just yeah sometimes it's difficult to juggle youtube which i want to be doing so much and i want to put like so much more time and energy into it than i'm able to and yeah i this is a rant but i'm gonna i'm gonna read wish me luck on actually sticking with that hopefully i don't just fall asleep <laughs> It's the next day. Um, I'm just going through it. And that you know what? That has to be okay. But I just am so overwhelmed that I don't want to do anything. Last night, I ended up doing one sprint. So I think that was like 45 minutes. And how much did I read? Okay, and I got to page 56 of No Exit. That's 20% in. I'm really liking it. I'm really interested to see where it goes because I was kind of surprised. Basically, we found out who has kidnapped this child like 30 pages in. <sighs> so we know exactly like whose car it is, who took the child, but now it's just like, how do we get her out of the situation? And I love my girl, Darby, the main character. She's so, she's so fun. Like she has this weird hobby of going around graveyards and taking like rubbings of the gravestones. I don't know, she's so quirky and cool and different. And she's being pretty smart about things. Um, I don't think she gives herself enough credit. She's like, Okay, I'm not going to tell anyone because I have the upper hand in this situation while, you know, no one knows that I know what's going on. But, you know, things are escalating and we're only 50 pages in and this is like 280 something pages. It is stressful as fast paced. I'm really, really enjoying it. I really like um, Taylor Adams writing. So, yeah, I do really like it. I just wish I had more time to read. Uh, maybe I will tonight. But I'm, it's like, yeah, it's 1.30. Haven't done anything. I have a seminar at four, but I'm meeting with my seminar group at three. So I really, I'm just going to get ready and 
go to a study center and like just work there for an hour or however long i just need to actually sit down and get things done ah <sighs> so yeah um wish me luck hopefully tonight i mean i'm staying in again so hopefully tonight i will actually read a decent chunk more of no exit we'll see we'll see um it's me again it's been like two seconds but i found out that my waterstones order is here i know what this is i probably won't be reading it in this vlog because it is a long book but oh here we go this is the hero of ages by brandon sanderson it's the third misborn book and these books just feel so good in my hands i have to say i hate the covers I hate them. What is that person's face doing on here? And worse, is that supposed to be her hair? I don't know. I like the whole blue misty vibe. I like the font. Like, I'm not mad about it, especially because I do have the whole rest of the series. So they all match. I've got the second one right here. So it's like, yeah, it's all it's all matching and it's the same girl with her face like that and I her hair is worse here but you know like in terms of that kind of vibe I'm not mad about it these books are so big and they just feel nice and they're not like super floppy but yeah I'm so excited because this five stars I loved it I loved it so this better be good, and I bet it will be, to be honest. Like, I'm not really doubting it. So, yeah. You know what? I'm happy. I gotta just, I gotta snap out of it. I gotta get out of my fucking house. Like, I, that's all I gotta do. So, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this. Hey, I'm back. My hair is crazy. It rained today, so my hair got all big. I mean, it's normally kind of big, but yeah anyway today was a better day i mean admittedly i got a late start i haven't done you know a lot of the things i would have liked to do and there's many reasons for that also it is currently 12 14 in the morning but i have to read this book for uni um by next week and i had like portioned it out of like okay this is how much i need to read every day i was supposed to start it yesterday i didn't and if i don't start it today i'm gonna have to read like 40 pages of that a day it's a lot for a book i'm reading for school and i want to be able to continue reading for fun so i want to make that more likely and read that book anyway i'm still working on that i'm literally on chapter two and i have to finish chapter four which should be fine. It's just like 35 pages or something. I made some tea because let me tell you, let me tell you about my day. So uh, you know what? I was kind of live, laugh, loving. Like, okay, no, actually, no. Okay, I know this is so irrelevant to the vlog. Like I'm not a lifestyle vlogger, but sometimes a girl just has to vent. So I, <laughs> I took ages getting ready today. And if I had gotten out of the house earlier, I would not have ran into my ex on the way to my seminar. It was horrible. I mean, it was fine. Like we're civil and whatnot, but it's just like, I don't want to see him around. And then I went to my seminar. That was great. You know, I love the girls that I do my like little presentations for every week. We've got a presentation in our seminar every week. So we met for an hour before and it was really fun. And the seminar was good. It's just long. And then my seminar ended at six, which is a bit late. And I was like, you know, since I didn't do anything today i'm gonna just go to like the study center and do stuff and i had like packed a dinner so i was like i will be fine i'm just gonna stay here for ages and then while i was there my friend texted me and was like hey do you want to go to this open mic night thing for drama and i was like okay i can do that but i didn't get there until like 9 15 and it started at 7 i thought it was gonna go till 11 which is a long, long time for an open mic. I was about to leave the house and I started getting like horrible cramps. So I debated not even going, but I was like, oh, it's fine. It's 10 minutes away. 
And then I was like looking up on the walk. I was like, does alcohol help with cramps? And then it was like, yeah, it does. So I got myself like a pint of cider, nothing crazy. And no, it didn't help. And I stayed for a while. I'm, I only saw literally an act and a half out of the open mic night and then it ended. And then I like ran into some friends um, and just kind of hung out there for a bit. But on my walk home, I was in such bad pain like i i have a really high pain tolerance i have chronic migraines and i'm used to like pushing through things but this was so bad and i'm on my period obviously so that's like oh anyway so i got home and i was like shaking and sweating and like my cramps had somehow like also started making my chest hurt and i was like I'm just not having a good time. So I laid down on my bed and like curled in a ball and randomly started watching American Horror Story season 11, the NYC one. Watched the first episode and was really sad that they didn't put the little intro thing in the first episode. So I started watching episode two just until that. And now here I am. Anyway, I have to do my reading for school. I'm feeling a little bit better, but I made some tea because my tummy is still a little bit upset. And I'm just gonna have some plain cream crackers because I'm out of brie um and maybe they'll be good for my tummy anyway that's like six minutes of this vlog that's not even about books but you I am going to I don't have anything on tomorrow so I think I'm gonna just try to actually read some of no exit tonight oh my god I can see myself. That's why I get so distracted by my hair and why I'm always touching it. <laughs> anyway, um, and maybe I'll update you guys later tonight when I've actually read some of No Exit. Because so far this readathon is not readathoning because I just have so much other stuff on my mind. Like I applied to 20 jobs today. Okay, toodles. Toodles, hopefully when I see you next, I will have read like 100 pages or something. Okay. Love you, bye. Hey, I'm back during the day. Shocker. Um, it is Sunday now. When I last spoke to you, it was Friday. So today's the 11th. I'm still not done with no exit. I did read up to 70% yesterday though. So I got a big chunk of it done and I think I can finish it tonight. I just also have reading for school. Also, sorry, someone is blasting music but i wanted to say hello during the daytime because i never do that i'm heading out the house now i mean it's like 3 30 and i have this thing at four that will be fun but it's just like i do i probably should have been working earlier in the day but i feel proud of myself like i cleaned a little bit did some dishes i did yoga like i did important things just not you know things on my to-do list necessarily so I'm gonna go to that and then I might stay at this study center after it's done to like do a bit more work then come back and read. But I am planning on finishing No Exit tonight. I swear to God, it has to get done sometime soon. And I'm loving it. I'm having so, so much fun. It's really intense and it's so interesting because it's a very, like it's a real life situation. Like what would I do? if this happened now i do have to say some of the like twists and turns i'm a little bit like that seems a little bit improbable but then at the same time like it does make sense sorry that was confusing also if you see my eyes going like this way that way it's because i'm looking at myself in the viewfinder because i'm just so gorgeous couldn't look away um but yeah, sorry if it feels like I'm not looking at you or if I am or if I, I don't know. I don't know. Some things I feel like are improbable, but then if you think about it more, it makes sense. I think that's kind of the vibe. The writing is good. Darby's character, I love, like she's so cool. Taylor Adams did a really good job of making the bad guy bad. They suck. I don't like reading about them. I'm trying to be vague. So it's not to spoil anything, but yeah, it's really good. It's really, really good for a thriller. Like I don't usually give thrillers high ratings and this is shaping up to be like a 4.25, 4.5. I don't know, it's good. It's really good. So I'm having so much fun with it, but I just have so much other stuff that I'm doing. And I wish that this readathon was readathoning more for me, 
but it's okay i'm only human like i have a whole bunch of other things that i have to do as well as read right now very sad <laughs> um but yeah i'll check in with you guys later hopefully tonight when i finished it fingers crossed <sighs> hi i just finished no exit obsessed i loved it it was so good it was so twisty like i could see how one could argue that there were too many plot twists but i was having such a good time i dare i say i'm in love with darby like she is amazing the ending like when i say that there are twists up until the very last couple of sentences of the book i'm not kidding i'm not exaggerating it was a whole roller coaster of emotions but i i don't typically find this with thrillers but i cared so much about the characters and it wasn't just the situation that they were in like it was that i they had actual things that i liked about them and personality traits that i liked and i felt like they were actually fleshed out and i don't typically feel that in thrillers i am giving this a 4.5 so good so good also you just like i was just on the edge of my seat i was so stressed out when i was reading this like you think that things can't get worse and then they get worse every time <sighs> so we'll need to recover from that somehow it is 12 30 i'm gonna go to bed soon but i do want to read a little bit more so i'm gonna do the next one so to keep track of these let's let's just take stock so we did we've passed through those first two circles of hell because i doubled up on that one so that was circle nine which is treachery which was doing something set in the snow circle eight which was fraud which is read a horror or thriller now we're on to circle seven violence which is read a book about vampires and i am going to be reading night's edge by liz something i i'm so sorry i'll put it right there i've forgotten who the author is right now but i'm really excited to start this i have heard really good things and i got it on my kindle from my library so another kindle book but hopefully I'll read this one faster. I'm really excited about it. Um, and I'll let you know more of like a synopsis probably tomorrow when I've read a bit. All right. A first book done and only over halfway into the readathon. And we don't have to, uh, good night. <laughs> Good night. We don't have to talk about that. Hi. Long time no see, unfortunately. I... <laughs> Today is the 16th. It is the last day of the readathon, and I've had a pretty rough week. I'm not gonna lie. Um, just physical, mental health stuff, all of the above. I've just been really exhausted. Like, I haven't been able to do much in terms of reading, in terms of uni, like, Lots of just sleeping. I'm doing a bit better. I finally started Night's Edge yesterday, and I read the first 100 pages. And now I'm like 145 pages in and I'm gonna try to finish it tonight because yeah, I mean, this this readathon has not really gone to plan. I will be stuck in hell. And you know what? That's just gonna have to be okay. Like sometimes life is just like this. I wish I was like perfect and always had so much time to read and to do things, but sometimes life just gets in the way and that, that's okay. As far as Night's Edge goes though, I'm really loving it. Uh, basically, this is about a girl named Mia and she lives with her mother and basically her mom has this disease and it's called Saratov syndrome and it's basically vampirism. It's really interesting because it's sort of like a pandemic type of vibe but with vampires and we have two different um timelines that we're following so we have 2010 which is when Mia's mother was turned into a vampire by her then boyfriend Devin who sucks we hate Devin. Devin is like manipulative he's abusive he's horrible 
and he's so mean to Mia but he basically, I think what happens, because it's never explicitly stated, is that he accidentally kills Mia's mom because he's got bloodlust. And then to make up for it, he turns her into a vampire. But I think it's sort of, I, he sort of seems like he's got a plan. Like I, it might've been accidental killing. I don't know. He's sus. He's really sus. So we follow that timeline of Mia and her mother having to deal with figuring out how she's going to live with this disease. Mia starts, you know, giving her mom blood every day to keep her fed so that she won't go out and like hunt people. Um, they're having to figure out how to live under the radar. And Mia is like 10 years old at this point. So she is having to grow up super fast. And her mom literally says, you have to be the adult now. Messed up, but I'm really interested in this mother-daughter dynamic and that plays into the present day, which is, I think we can assume like 2023. I don't know when this was published, but it's giving 2022, 2023 vibes. Now the world is kind of adapted to this sort of Sarah pandemic and everywhere you go, you kind of have to get your finger pricked and they'll test your blood to see if you're a Sarah or not. That's what they call them. Um, and yeah, there's lots of regulations and all that sort of stuff. Mia's mom works at this diner that she owns. And so that's how she sort of bypasses the whole finger prick thing because she's like, it's my diner. Like obviously I don't have a Sarah. Um, so yeah, she works night shifts. She can't really go out in the sun, all the vampire-y things. But we sort of kick off at this time when Mia starts to suspect that her mom is hiding something. And they have a very codependent, like, isolated relationship, her and her mom, where basically they've decided we can't trust anyone. Anyone outside the two of us, we can't have because that's gonna risk our safety. People who are Sarah's, if they are discovered, they get taken to these like treatment centers, but they never return. It doesn't, I don't know. There's lots of speculation about what goes on there, but it doesn't seem to be super nice and great. So they're really trying to avoid that. And in order to do this, they've had to cut everyone else out of their lives. So it's just the two of them. And then like the employees at this diner, and they don't get close with them. Like Mia has no friends, her mom has no friends, but Mia starts noticing her mom starting to get some texts on her phone and stuff. So that's starting to freak her out. And then Mia herself meets this girl named Jade and she feels this like pull to her. And she develops a little crush, but she's like, I can't, I, I don't have any friends, let alone, like, I can't have a girlfriend. No one can know anything about this. Because, like, she can't even, like, let's say she can't even take Jade to her house. Because all the windows are, like, like blacked out with curtains taped up. Like, it's just, she has lots to hide. So, we're dealing with those two timelines. I am really liking it. I... I think it's a really interesting portrayal of this mother-daughter relationship that's like loving but kind of like emotionally abusive and toxic and there's manipulation from her mother's side at least. I don't know. Drama. It's, it's really good. I'm liking it a lot. So I'm hoping to finish that tonight and then the next level of how I think what would that be? the sixth level of hell, the prompt is a hyped release. And I'm thinking if I finish Night's Edge today, I might be able to get through all of Heartstopper 5, which would be my hyped release and I have it from the library. So we'll see. I mean, that would depend on me just kind of reading the rest of the day and who knows, cause I've been depressed and I've been napping a lot so I'm probably gonna take another nap I have to go do my laundry which if you've seen I think it must be my 12-hour reading vlog video I was doing my laundry and it takes ages because I had a laundromat and 
So I have to like walk there and back and there and back and all the things. So yeah, currently just debating whether I should take a nap now and then do laundry or if I should do laundry and then take a nap. I'm not even tired. I just can't think of anything else to do. I mean, I could read. I don't know. I'm just, this week has been kind of a flop. I can't lie. So next week is reading week, which is good. I'll get my head screwed back on. Like, I just need a break. All right, I'll update you guys later tonight or tomorrow. Hopefully I'll finish Night's Edge tonight and it would be lovely if I could also read Heart Stopper Volume 5 tonight. But we'll see. All right, bye. All right, it is officially the 17th. It's 12.51 a.m. I've just been faffing about because I, I, I read for hours. I kind of slayed that. Um, after I saw you, no, I didn't do my laundry. I took a nap and somehow that nap was from eight was from 5 15 ish to like 8 30 like i don't know i was i knocked out but i kind of just read from like 9 until 1203 which is when i finished heart stop for volume 5 but first i'll talk about night's edge because i did really like it and i finished it wow i'm giving it 4.5 stars i loved it the relationship between me and her mom is it's so incredibly interesting and it's really complex. And I don't think that the novel like shies away in any way from that complexity. Like it's sort of encouraging you to put yourself in Mia's shoes and, and like, what would you do? What would you do if this was your one person in the world? And sure, they're abusive and they're manipulative, but they're all you've ever known. And you know, you depend on them, but they're not reliable. Like, I don't know. It was so good. It was really intense. Um, I guess it is technically horror. I didn't feel like it was super scary. Like there weren't a lot of scenes that would make me go, wow, this is horror, but I guess it would be. There was this like tension the whole way through, which did kind of keep me on the edge of my seat. I read, let's see. I mean, I read like 30% of it yesterday and the rest of it today. So 70% of it today. And I was locked in like I didn't even feel like I was reading for three hours it was that good it's set in Arizona where I used to live fun fact um and the heat and kind of like the there's just this like blandness to Arizona and I feel like that kind of atmosphere made it feel even more kind of claustrophobic and I was feeling nervous I was engaged I I loved it I had so much fun and I am desperate for the next book now because it sort of ended on a cliffhanger. But I also found out when I was looking up the next book that apparently it's going to be a series. And also there's a film for No Exit. So maybe I'll watch that. But I don't know. I'm kind of scared. I don't know what it's if it's going to be good. I haven't really like heard about it. Anyway, with the last like 45 minutes of the readathon, I read... Heartstopper volume five. I was able to read this all in one sitting and it was so good. Um, if you don't know, Heartstopper is about Nick and Charlie and they are two boys in secondary school in the UK and they meet and, you know, Nick's on the rugby team. Charlie is out as gay, but, um, you know, has been bullied for this. He's been out for a while and he meets Nick and he gets a crush on Nick, but he's like, oh my God, I don't even know if Nick is gay. Like, I don't know what's happening, but they form this really sweet friendship. And then things develop from there. Obviously this is the fifth volume. This came out late last year and I was so excited to read it. So this was my hyped pick, my hot pick, um, which means I've passed through circle six, which was heresy. I guess I'm chilling in circle five, trapped there forever. But you know what? Given the way that my week went, I'm really proud of having read three books for the readathon. Like I that's good for me. This one was really nice. I really liked oh, I really liked this one. Gave it also 4.5 stars. I was like smiling and giggling. It was kind of a nice palette cleanser after Night's Edge because that was a bit dark. There's like two main things going on in this. 
one nick is applying for uni and so they're kind of grappling grappling with this thing of like maybe we'll have to do long distance soon nick and charlie are both a little bit worried about this because they don't know if they can do long distance they're just like they really rely on each other and they're trying to figure out how things would even go if they had to do long distance and also they're thinking about taking the next step in the relationship sex it's sex yeah really cute there's just so much there's like representation for everything in this book it's crazy non-binary representation asexual representation bi gay um everything everything and it's just done so casually like they just live in this lovely little world where everyone's just themselves and it's so sweet and so heartwarming and i'm so excited for the next one because that's going to be the last one and i trust alice oseman to really to make that one good because this was supposed to be the last one and then she was like i just think there's more that i want to do to wrap up this story and i respect an author that like has a has a plan of how they're going to end things and doesn't just keep churning stuff out um but i am selfishly happy that we're getting another one so yeah i loved it so okay for this readathon oh maybe i'll calculate like how many pages i read okay so for this readathon i read 912 pages which i would say that's good you know i i just again rough week so i'm proud proud of myself and i'm really happy because i read all books that i liked in this so it's ending on a really good note thanks to jan for doing this readathon like hosting it and everything i loved it had such a good time when i was here and present and reading <laughs> and yeah thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this leave is there a vampire emoji if you can leave that i would love it if you watched to this point also be sure to like and subscribe if you want to if you want to no one's stopping you so yeah um i hope you enjoyed this i will be back for another video next week bye